எழுத்து கிளியரா விளங்குது உங்களுக்கு பிரச்சனைஸ் we see that uh, the convergence of a linear multi step method is determined by the consistency of the method as well as convergence of the method right so you sh- you should verify or you should make sure that the method is consistent and zero stable to guarantee the convergence of the method right so now we will start with an example uh y n plus 2 plus alpha minus 1 times y n plus 1 plus or minus alpha times y n is equal to h over 4 alpha plus 3 f of xn plus 2 tn plus 2 plus 3 alpha plus 1 f of tn comma y okay so a method is given like this right yn plus 2 plus alpha 1 ta- alpha one minus 1 yn plus 1 plus alpha yn and is equal to h over 4 uh, alpha plus 3 fn plus 2 and alpha plus 3 alpha plus 1 fn uh, is a linear multi step method so the question is right so find the values of alpha such that the method is convergent right that is the first part right so discuss the order of the method for alpha so for different values of alpha obviously you can expect that you will have different values of uh, different orders right so you may need to verify those things right so this is a question so we will do the first part second part is a simple exercise so i will leave it for you the first part you have to check or find the values of alpha such that the method is convergent so you all know that you have to look for the order of the method right and you have to make sure that the order is at least 1 so in a way you have to show that 
C0 and C1 are zero here. And then you have to look for the first characteristic polynomial. And you have to make sure that the roots of the first characteristic polynomial satisfies the Dahlquist uh, root condition. Right? So uh, for all of those, you first have to write down what is your A0 is minus alpha, A1 is equal to alpha minus 1, and A2 is obviously 1 here. right? So you write on A0, A1, and A2. And then similarly, B0 is 3 alpha plus 1 divided by 4. Remember, you have a h over 4, but in the formula you should have h. So you should bring this 4 inside to get B0 and B1. right? Obviously, B1 is 0. There is no B1 there because there is no f tn plus 1, yn plus 1 term. And then uh, B2 is alpha plus 3 over 4. And so this is your constants or the coefficients associated with the linear multi-step method. Right, so once you know the coefficients, then you can check the order, right? So that's not a big deal. Right, so, but before going to the order, let me write down the first characteristic polynomial, rho of z, that's j is equal to zero to two, aj, z to the power j. So a naught is minus alpha plus a one, is alpha minus one z plus z squared. Right, so this is your characteristic polynomial. Right, so you have to factor this out. So here you have uh, minus alpha my, plus alpha z minus z plus z squared. Right, so, so if you factor out z here, uh, so minus alpha, you get one minus, oh, if you factor out alpha, you get z minus one. And then if you factor out z plus z, then you get z minus one. So eventually you get z minus one and z plus alpha. Okay, so once you factor out, you get z minus 1 and z plus alpha. So you can find the roots of that, which is obvious here. Right, one of them is minus alpha and the other one is plus 1. Okay, so roots... plus one and minus alpha are the roots, right? So if you have those roots, then you know the Dahlquist condition, root condition says the absolute value of the roots must be less or equal to one. So this is obviously equal to one. So this has to be less or equal to one, right? Right? Right, so we need this minus alpha square absolute values less than one. So that obviously this has to be minus one less or equal to alpha less or equal to plus one. So that should be the range, right? So you obviously know that, right? So, but there is a problem, right? But if you take alpha equal to minus one, right? So this portion, right? Alpha is equal to plus one is fine, right? So if you take alpha is equal to plus one, here you have plus one and minus one, two different roots, but both of them are equal to one, absolute value equal to one, that's fine, perfectly fine.
but if you have alpha 1 alpha is equal to minus 1 then then in the root for this first characteristic polynomial are going to be plus 1 and plus 1 again right so that is not possible so clearly you know that when alpha is equal to minus 1 the root is not zero stable so you have to exclude that part so for zero stability you should have minus 1 strictly less than alpha less so equal to plus 1 so that should be the condition for the zero stability right once you know the zero stability then you have to verify the order right so next next yeah next you try to find c naught And C naught is equal to summation of J running from 0 to 2 AJ. Right? So that is obvious. Minus alpha plus alpha plus 1 plus 1. So that's clearly 0. You know that. Right? And then C1. C time J times A J minus B J. Right, so that you can simplify. So J is zero is gone. So A one one times A one that is alpha minus one plus two times A two that is one times 2, so that's 2, minus B naught, B naught is 3 alpha plus 1 over 4, and then minus B1 is 0, and B2 is alpha plus 3 over 4. So here you get minus 4 alpha over 4, that's minus alpha, plus alpha cancelled out, 1 plus, minus 1 plus 2, and you have a 1 fourth and 3 fourth, so that's 4 over 4, minus 1, so minus 1 plus 2 minus 1, so that's obvious 0. So these two are enough, right, C naught and C1 is equal to 0 is enough to show that the method is consistent. And you can see that here you get C naught and Z, C1 is equal to 0 for all alpha, right? And because C naught C1 is equal to 0 for all alpha, we can say that the method is consistent for all alpha belongs to real number. Right. So once we say that it is consistent for all alpha, but we have a condition for zero stability, therefore the convergence is only when both zero stability and consistency conditions hold. So, zero stability has a restriction, so we have to have that restriction. Thus,
so between minus 1 and plus 1 including minus 1 excluding minus 1 including plus 1 the method is converge right so this is how you verify the convergence by using the consistency and zero stability of the method right? the second part is they asked to discuss the order of the method so that is not a big thing you can always compute c1 already computed c2 c3 c4 and you keep on computing right so at some point you will have the zero of the ci depends on various values of alpha right once you see that uh, point you can see that for this alpha the order is larger than this for this alpha the order is this and stuff like that you can always discuss right so that is how you discuss the order of the method so that is just computation for these alphas and beta alphas right you know aijs and bjs right so you can uh, find all the c node c1 c2 c3 c4 and so on to get the uh, discuss the order right so that part i leave as an exercise okay so that's what we have uh, talked about in the last class right so that is about the uh, order of the method and or the consistency and the convergent and zero stability so now we have to talk about another type of stability right so this is a zero stability so this has a special name zero stability like that what we are going to do is to we are going to define something called absolute stability today right so and then we are going to see the conditions for the absolute stability So absolute stability is slightly more, uh, in, in a sense, it is a little more uh, compact than the uh, zero stability. So we will title it as it's called absolute stability. So let us define what we call by absolute stability
Okay, so here, right? So what we call by absolute stability is you basically have to apply the method, right? Whatever the numerical method given, right? May it be Euler method, may it be trapezoidal rule, may it be midpoint rule, may it be Adam Bashworth method or whatever the method. When you apply that to this type of scalar differential equation, right? So you all know the this type of first order differential equation, right? Y prime is equal to lambda y. So this can be solved by uh, direct computation as well, right? So just by integrating, right? So you get log of y is equal to lambda. So y is equal to e to the power lambda plus c and stuff like that. The first order ordinary differential equation solution method you know, right? So that can be easily solved. So when we apply the method to this kind of a scalar equation where lambda is a complex number, right? So if the sequence generated by that numerical method is a sequence of approximations, and if they are bounded, if the sequence is bounded, right? So then absolute value of that yn is less than some fixed value. That is what we mean by boundedness. Right? So as long as this is bounded, we call that the method is absolutely stable, right? So that is, that in a VA means, right, the, even if you change this, the, you know the meaning of stability, right? So if you change the initial value by a little bit, right, if the method is stable, then the change in the solution will also be a small margin, right? So, but if you change the initial value by a small margin, and if the change in the solution is huge, then we call that method is non-stable, right? Unstable method. You studied in ordinary differential equations on a degree as well, right? So you may be studying now, right? So that's how you define stability. So here we talk about the stability of the method. So here the, the stability of the method means if you have a bounded sequence as an output, then obviously it will make sure that uh, even for a small change in the initial value, the solution stays bounded so that there will be not a big change. Right? So as long as the solution is bounded, we call that method is absolute stable. Right? But you obviously know looking for a solution by using a numerical method and then making sure it is bounded is a big procedure. So we may have to find some alternative methods to verify the absolute stability, or at least we have to have a mechanism to see within what region the method is absolutely stable. Right? So we are going to derive a mechanism which will help us to at least draw a region within which our linear multi-step method, the numerical method is absolutely stable. Right? So in order to do that, we will start with the regular linear multi-step method. It... Okay, so this is your linear multi-step method. Okay. Now, you know that you have to apply this linear multi-step method to this scalar differential equation. Right, so you have to apply it for y prime is equal to lambda y. So obviously you know your function f is lambda times y. Mr. 
because f is y so aj plus 1 aj times yn plus j is equal to h times bj times lambda yn plus j right so now you move everything to one side right and then you can set this together okay so h times lambda together but by definition we name it q it's so i rename it q here and then move everything here so aj minus q times bj yn plus j so now you can see that this is a homogeneous equation right in the first year ordinary differential equation you studied that when you have derivative function of derivative is equal to zero the right hand side is zero then we call it as homogeneous equation and so here it is a homogeneous equation but instead of derivative you have approximation for derivative so we call it as a homogeneous difference equation and so it's going to be a homogeneous difference equation on yn All right so once you have the homogeneous difference equation then we have to look for the solution right so it is the solution method is somewhat similar to solving a higher order differential equation which you studied in first year right i am not sure whether in the new syllabus you have solution of higher, higher difference equation as well but it will be similar to the solution of differential equation right so you must have learned this something like ad squared plus bd plus c is equal to 0 or ad to the power n plus bd right d is dy by dt right so times y is equal to 0 and then you write the characteristic polynomial a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c is equal to 0 and then you solve the characteristic polynomial and then by finding the roots you write down the equation as d minus root 1 and d minus root 2 and then you solve it so a similar kind of idea we are going to apply here at right? solving a higher order difference equation right hello okay so you write the characteristic polynomial in the same way right so what is the notation we are going to use we are going to use z right so right so z is the characteristic 
notation we are going to use, right? So in first year OD, you must have used lambda, but here because we have lambda somewhere else, let me use z as the uh, variable for the characteristic polynomial, right? So once you do that, then you can see that this is equal to Okay, so this is equal unto this, right? AJ, ZJ minus Q times this. So this has to do with the characteristic polynomials which we define for linear multi-step method, right? So the meaning of this characteristic polynomial and what we are going to say here as characteristic polynomials are two different things, right? So this is similar to the characteristic polynomials which you right when you are finding the determinant of a matrix or finding the uh, solving a higher order ordinary differential equation stuff like that but here the characteristic polynomials are associated with the linear multi-step method right so this is basically equal unto rho of z minus q times sigma of z is equal to zero Okay, so instead of writing, keeping this zero, let me say this, this way, so that is easy, right? So, because I say characteristic polynomial, not the characteristic equation, so the correct notation is equal, right? So this one is equal to this one, and this one is equal to this one. That should be the correct notation, because here I say characteristic polynomial, not the characteristic equation. So then you have a new polynomial here, right? So this is the characteristic polynomial of the difference equation. And this depends on two things. One is a variable Z as well as a variable Q because lambda is a variable, right? So now you have a polynomial of two variables. One is lambda Q and the other one is Z. Right? So we can name it as a two variable polynomial. And we call this as the stability polynomial of a linear multi-step method. Right, so this is called the stability polynomial of the linear multi-step method, right? So that's understandable. So once you have a stability polynomial, then you know you can find the roots of it, right? So obviously you have, you can find the roots of this stability polynomial. Once you find the roots, then you can see the size of the roots, absolute value of the roots. And then you can see the repeated roots as well, right? So, so now, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Roots Z one, Z two up to Z S.
So let us say that the roots of the polynomials are z1, z2 up to zs and they have multiplicities m1, m2 up to ms. So then clearly you can write this in this way. So this is how you write down when you have multiple roots, right? Okay, so if you have roots like this, right? then you are going to have a general solution, right? So that's little too much for you. Let me just introduce the way we write the solution, but you can uh, read some books to understand how a, a linear difference equation is solved, right? Okay, so this is how it is a, basically it looks like a system of equations. Z1.
Okay, so here, but let me explain how do you write the solution, right? So you solve the characteristic polynomial and you have roots, z1 up to zs. So there are s roots. And each of them, suppose you have multiplicity m1, m2 up to ms. So basically the characteristic polynomial can be written in this factored form, right? So, and then when you add all the powers, you should have, have the largest power and largest power will be p here. So that's obvious. Now, once you know that, then you what you write is, you write a general solution. So general solution is a linear combination of z1 to the power n, z2 to the power n up to zn to the power or zs to the power n, right? But that linear combination, the coefficients are basically c11 and n times c12 and up to n to the power m minus 1, c m1, m1, right? So c1, m1 and so on. So this is a big coefficient and how to find these coefficients and how to get these equations are a different topic, right? So I'm not going to tell you how to do this. Hello? Hello, oh, sir. Oh, ma'am. Ah, sorry. Oh, later on that, but I'm going to do Ah. Sorry, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so here that is how you write the solution. Now, the, the purpose of this solving this equation is to see the absolute stability of the linear multi step method, right? So it says the linear multi step method is absolute stable if this sequence, the solution yn, because this yn is basically the same yn you have for the different sequence. The, linear multi-step method applied to the first order differential equation as well. So this has to be bounded. So now when you bound this, right, it tells you that it will give you a condition for absolute stability. And we are not going to prove that condition again because even finding the solution is not known to you so far. And then bounding this and then getting the condition for boundedness is difficult. So that is for additional reading. Right? So now as a remark, I'm just going to say how this boundedness of this solution can be simplified in terms of roots of the polynomial, right? So as a remark, Right, so if the roots of the polynomial satisfies the Dahlquist root condition, right, so that means the roots are less or equal to one, 
and root width modulus equal to 1 being simple, right? Similar to the zero stability for the first characteristic polynomial. Here we use the zero stability, the 